Okay, good morning everyone. We'll get things started now. Um, welcome to our special executive level webcast series and uh, welcome to Autodesk 2013. My name is Laura Guzman. I am the Vice President of Marketing here at Microdesk and I want to thank you for joining us today as we take a look at the 2013 edition of Navisworks. In a moment I'll be going over um, I'll be turning things over to today's presenters, but first I just want to run through a few quick logistics. In order to minimize any background distractions, you are all on mute for the duration of the session. We will not have time for any Q&A today, but if you do have questions, please feel free to type those into the question area of the webinar toolbar to the right of your screen. And we will address those one-on-one um, -on -one with you after the presentation. We'll also provide you with our contact information at the end so you can follow up with us. So um, feel free to ask away, and we'll look forward to speaking with you more about all the great new features of Navisworks after the fact. All right, with that, I will turn it over to Mike Lacey, President of Microdesk, to kick off our presentation. Mike. Thanks, Laura, and welcome to Autodesk 2013, everyone. Uh, before we jump into all the great new features of Navisworks 2013, a little bit about Microdesk. I think that most of you are familiar with us, but Microdesk is an Autodesk Gold Partner. We're also an Oracle Gold Partner. And as of this year, we're happy to announce that we're Autodesk's North American Channel Partner of the Year, a pretty significant recognition of, from Autodesk of all the work that we've been doing within the architecture, engineering, construction, and owner-operator markets. Um, as an organization, Microdesk has 12 offices. We have seven offices on the East Coast, our newest office in Chicago, and four offices in California. And all told, we're a little over 90 um, AEC and operations and maintenance industry consultants and software developers. When we think about Autodesk's 2013 product release, you'll see some marketing and some advertising from Microdesk where we try and draw the analogy between uh, design, construction, and operations and maintenance technology with the automobile industry and the cars that we drive. And if you think about the cars that we drive, not too long ago we were dri driving big gas guzzlers and using paper maps to figure out how to get from point A to point B. And now you look at the cars that we're driving and they're electric cars that get more than 100 miles to the gallon and they're very technology savvy. They have, you know, GPS systems in them. We're streaming you know, radio content from the internet and using just a tremendous amount of technology that the improvements have been significant. And we believe the same thing when, when you look at design, construction, and operations and maintenance technology. If you, if you think about Navisworks when it was initially released or you think about Revit back in 2009 and the changes that we've seen in the software between 2009 and 2013. Um, and now as we start to introduce even more technology where, you know, with the cloud and, and with uh, more integration of products, we're, we're seeing that same kind of level of change in the industry. The three things that, that we think are most compelling about the Autodesk 2013 release and things that we want you to take away from, from this session and from the webinars that follow are the integration, um, the level of interoperability between the 2013 products, and now as we introduce cloud technology, the level of collaboration that we can, that we can create with these products and, and the fact that you know, the 2013 release, using these three key things are, are starting to really affect change on how we go about designing, constructing, and operating and maintaining buildings and infrastructure. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Louise Buchanan. Louise is our content manager, and she has more than 10 years of experience working in the design and construction world, and she's going to talk to us a little bit about some of the great new features of Navisworks 2013. Louise? Louise, I'm afraid we can't hear you. Can you uh, check your audio, please? Sorry about that, folks. Bear with us just a second while we try and get Louise back up and running with the audio. Bear with us.
Okay, folks, a little bit of challenges with Louise on the audio. She's logging back in now. But uh, while we're paused here, we can talk about a couple of pretty interesting new developments with the IRS 2013 product release. And I'm going to hit a couple of the things that you'll probably hear from Louise. But um, pretty significant things are the fact that Navisworks now has, yep, Louise, you back? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about so that. I can hear you guys. Back. All right. You might want to back up one slide. That's fine. Uh, All right. Thanks so much. No problem. Okay, uh, so uh, we wanted to basically, just because we're limited on time, we wanted to stick to two main categories, um, streamlining team workflows and project simulation, which will um, show you the differences and all of the new features that have been added to the software. So there's just so many great features that, that, that's been added on this release that we just wanted to stick to um, a few of them that I think you guys would be very impressed with. Um, so dealing with streamlined team workflows, uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the Revit interoperability. Um, you now have the ability to bring in Revit files directly and natively into Navisworks. Uh, this will allow you for having more of a streamlined uh, workflow between Revit and Navisworks. In addition to the ability to be able to view Revit files, you have access to that Revit hierarchy as well, um, which will allow you to get access to the level lines and the the object types and the uh, family type and even the materials that are coming out of Revit. So you now can bring that information, or it's organized in a similar manner to what you're used to seeing in the Revit environment. <clears throat> Along with the Revit hierarchy and file support, you also have the ability to be able to bring in the grid lines and levels um, visually into Navisworks. So I can now define what lay, um, what level the uh, grid lines are going to be visible on, whether I'm going to see both the upper and the lower levels um, for grid line um, visualization, and also I can control the color um, of the grid lines. And um, when I hover over an A section, it'll tell me the level and the intersection that I'm on. So this will help me to actually view and interact in real time within the model and allow us to have a consistent and universal way of communicating and understanding where we are within the model at all times. They've improved the selection tools considerably, including the addition of the selection inspector. Um, the selection inspector will now allow us to be able to look at things that we've selected on the screen, define if we actually wanted to keep them as part of a selection set, or um, turn them off or um, mark them as, as uh, unchecked if we didn't want them to be part of that selection set. Um, along with that, we also have drag and drop technology where we can select things on the screen and drag it into the selection set window and it will create a selection set with that. And that technology will not only be powerful within the selection sets, but it will also translate into the timeliner and the, um, the clash detective. So the next group we want to talk about is the items that will fall underneath our project simulation and coordination. And the first thing I want to talk about is the addition of 5D analysis. Never in a release of Navisworks have you had the ability to do 5D analysis in Navisworks. You've only been able to do the 4D. Um, so the addition of adding cost values to your, your timeliner is going to be a very powerful tool. It will allow you to um, communicate forward how much money is being spent at a particular time within different categories of your project um, through the timeline event. You can even take a snapshot at a certain time of what the money at a certain date has been spent on this project. And some of, uh, one of the bigger things that a lot of people always ask about is the clash detection. Well, a lot of things have changed with the clash detection. They've um, upgraded the interface. They've added um, new features or new columns, I should say, within the searchable ranges of the clashes, including like levels and grids, just like you've seen throughout some of the other processes. And you have the ability to um, organize the information a little bit better in a, in a little bit different of a manner. And you can add um, classifications to who is the owner um, and who the clash is assigned to um, so that that information can then be exported into your report. I'm just going to show a little bit of a demo of some of the things we just talked about. 
So for the first time ever, you have, you have the ability to bring in Revit files directly into Navisworks. You no longer have to spend time exporting the files to Navis, and you also do not have to spend time breaking the Revit file out by level or system, which in the past we always um, had as a best practice to better separate the model so that selection sets were easier to create. Now because they have incorporated the Revit hierarchy into Navisworks, they have also utilized the ability to select objects in Navis by level, family type, object, and material straight from the selection tree. These functions alone will save you time and headache. For the selection improvements, um, Navisworks has added, the, um, in addition to the Revit hierarchy, a very power, powerful and helpful organizational and grouping of your data through the selection um, inspector. You can go through the selection inspector and actually define whether things are going to be um, checked or rejected from what you have selected. You can also organize the information that has been selected, and you can add additional columns through the quick properties in the selection inspector to better organize the information that you're looking at. Also, the addition of adding grids and levels has been added within Navisworks so that you have the ability to view the grids and levels within your model uh, right from your screen. So you'll be able to see the grid intersection that you are on, as well as being able to find what Revit file that grid is going to be coming from. So if you wanted to show it from your structural file, or if you wanted to show it from your architectural file, you can actually define that right here in Navisworks. And then on top of that, you'll have the ability to go in and define whether you want to see all grid lines um, on every level, or if you want to just see with the active level that you're looking at at that particular moment, the grid lines that are associated to the upper level or the lower level. There's also now the ability to show the grid lines in a uh, x-ray mode that allows you to see straight through the model. Um, so there's a lot more flexibility, and I can tell you that this is probably one of my favorite features because I know that when I do class reporting, I always want to know where that class is in accordance to a column line, a section, or a level line. And now you can actually visually, visually see that on your screen. So this is a great feature. Um, 5D cost analysis has also been added. So for the first time ever in Namersworks, you now have the ability to, do, to not only do your 4D analysis, but you can now utilize 5D analysis. You can add some cost values to your timeline or uh, simulation. You can control where those columns will appear and which ones will show within the timeline. With that, Navisworks has given you the ability to overlay cost values as you play your simulation. So you can look at the cost values for different categories, like equipment. Um, you can look at your total cost value. You can look at the construction cost value. And you can also define on which ones will be visible at what time during your simulation, and also you can stop your simulation at any time to be able to see those particular cost values. The fact that you can now do some 5D analysis right here in Navisworks means that this is one last piece of software that you will have to use to complete your BIM model, which will help streamline your building process and building coordination. The Clash Detective has done a complete overhaul of the interface. They have improved the visual visibility of how your tests will be displayed and organized, and tools for reviewing clashes as well. With the addition of grids and levels in the selection tree, it only makes sense to also include that functionality here as well. They will have also, <coughs> sorry, they have also given you more ability to sort your results in the clash detective by level or grid, or the ref, um, or grid reference, for instance. An addition for a quick filters has also been added to better see your results. And you can also organize your information within the Clash Detective by an assigned to person or other um, quick properties within um, the Clash Detective. The highlighted and uh, isolation settings has been grouped and set with better functionality on this new interface. Also, the drag and drop technology that had been added for the selections can also be utilized in the Clash Detective. Ultimately, the clash detective will speed up the time it takes to organize and find those clashes, and you will be spending less time finding the clashes and more time fixing them. Uh, so just in summary, um, as the, we just uh, saw, these are the new features that we, we are looked at in uh, Navisworks 2013. 
Um, so looking at the Revit file support and adding grids and levels as a visual function within Navisworks. And also some improvements to your selection tools, addition of the 5D cost analysis, and looking at the clash detective. And now I'm going to sign it back over to you, Mike. Louise, thanks so much. Great job. Um, obviously some great new capabilities within Navisworks 2013. Um, do want to mention the suites. So Navisworks 2013 is included in the Building Design Suite Ultimate as well as the Infrastructure Design Suite Ultimate. And you know a, a couple of things about those suites. One is that they contain significantly increased cloud storage, as well as cloud computing um, capabilities. So uh, a great enhancement there. And in addition, the the design suites now include what they call what, what we've been calling Revit One Box, which is uh, a version of Revit that includes all of the features of Revit architecture, Revit MAP, and Revit structure within one install and within one interface. So you'll have one product that actually has all of the capabilities of all three Revit products. So design suites have, have also gone through a pretty significant upgrade. Some, uh, some, some quick uh, logistics. So if you're interested in more information and seeing the full um, enhancements to Navisworks 2013, please join us for our webcast that will be held in May. You can kind of track and keep schedule of when those webcasts are happening at microdesk.com at the URL that you see listed there. Um, as always, if you're interested in more immediate information on Navisworks 2013 or any of the Autodesk 2013 suite of products, please give us a call. Send us an email. Get in touch with us. We'll be happy to help in any way that we can. Again, when you think about Autodesk 2013, I think that, that what you will find, what we definitely have found, is that the products are, are, are considerably better integrated. Um, the interoperability, like the ability to open an RV, RVT file directly in Navisworks, um, you have that same cap capability now of opening that RVT file directly in Max Design or in Showcase. Um, the interoperability um, between the products, like the fact that Navisworks is now reading the entire structure and hierarchy of the Revit file, and the collaboration capabilities where we can now post these files out to the cloud. Uh, we can use cloud-based re cloud rendering tools and cloud-based analysis tools to improve our workflows. And in the coming months, you're going to find that there's going to be just a significant increase in the number of cloud-based um, applications that we can use to streamline our workflow. And, and a number of them will be specifically around Navisworks and the ability to do um, cloud-based coordination and host virtual coordination meetings. So a lot to come there. And with that, I want to thank everybody for attending. Um, please. Uh, uh, Provide us any feedback you might have. We always love to get feedback. And uh, again, thanks for your time this morning. Have a great day. Bye-bye.